Welcome back to the Professor's Lab. I'm Professor V, and this is round three of the league tournament that happened at Die Hard Games on January 25th, 2024. If you didn't know, Die Hard League happens every Thursday at 6 p.m. Central, featuring casual and tournament play of whatever format anyone wants, really. Let me know what formats you want in the comments below. More info in the description. League Challenge, Thursday, February 15th at 6 p.m., and League Cup, Saturday, February 24th at 11 a.m. Both Central Time, both at Die Hard Games, and check out Pokemon's Event Locator for premier events there, such as League Challenges, League Cups, and Pre-Leases. Please hit that like button right quick, subscribe to this channel, ring the bell for notifications, say what you need to say in the comments, and all that other good free stuff. But anyways, let's get into this game. On the left, Lost Giratina. On the right, Roaring Moon. Looks like our Roaring Moon player is going first, starting things off with that Galarian Moltres V in the active spot, benching a Squawkabilly EX. Putting a Bravery Charm on that Squawkabilly EX, giving it plus 50 HP. Attaching a Dark Energy to the active Moltres. No, no, not quite committing to that Dark Energy attachment there. Actually debating on pitching this hand with the Squawk and Seize. Maybe you attach the energy, but may maybe you save the energy attachment for after the squawk and seize, just in case the roaring moon is drawn into or anything like that. So yes, just going to squawk and seize. You can only use that ability on squawk ability EX during the first turn, your first turn when you do discard your hand and draw six fresh new cards. Let's let's see what the squawk ability has gifted here. No battle VIP pass yet. An Ultra Ball is being debated on played here on being played here. Yep, Ultra Ball discarding a couple cards to Dark Energy to search the deck for a Pokemon. Let's see switch card uh, and some other cards in the hand, can't quite tell what they are. Either way gonna play this Ultra Ball and fetch out of the deck a Pokemon card. Debating on grabbing that Roaring Moon EX. That would be a very uh, safe conservative pick here uh, with a hand. Get your main attacker out and start powering it up. But the Radiant Greninja is also being debated, so our player feels lucky here with the, uh, access to a Dark Energy and Concealed Cards to see some more cards. We're feeling lucky and going hunting for that battle VIP pass. Starting things off with the trekking shoes, take a look at the top card. It can be kept or discarded, and one more card drawn and kept. Let's see, switch card, that's not going to do it, so got to pitch it. Let's draw that one more card, looking for that battle VIP pass. No, it's a dark energy. Another trekking shoes being played. For a dark patch, there's no dark Pokemon on the bench right now, so I think we've got to pitch that one as well. Still no battle VIP pass. <laughs> now we're at concealed cards. Radiant Greninja discards an energy to draw two more cards with its ability. Let's see if that battle VIP pass can be found. No. <laughs> so this turn did not really uh, go the way our player was envisioning, I imagine. Did find that more Peko, so it can be put on the bench and uh, potentially powered up. It is a good attacker into that Sableye. Going to use Glaring Moltres V's Dire Flame Wings ability to accelerate an energy, dark energy from the discard of pile to it. Still unsure about attaching that dark energy to the more Peko. Looks like it's actually going to be attached to the active Moltres V. And things will be passed over to Lost Giratina, who opens with Battle VIP Pass and Nest Ball. Battle VIP Pass, the infamous item card that can only be played on your first turn, but when you do, 
Search your deck for up to two basic Pokemon to put onto the bench. And Nest Ball, of course, will find a basic Pokemon that can be put onto the bench. Double Comfey and Radiant Greninja found here. Let's see what else our lost Giratina player has. First, Radiant Greninja discards an energy to draw a couple more cards. Jet energy put onto the Comfey on the bench to bring it into the active spot. It uses its flower selecting ability to look at the top two cards of the deck, send one of them to the lost zone, and add the other to the hand. That Comfey manually retreats into the second Comfey, second flower selecting used here, sending a water energy into the lost zone. And passes things over to Roaring Moon. Looks like the top deck was that energy switch there. Three, three cards in hand, uh, starting with the Dire Flame Wings to accelerate the energy from the discard to that Glaring Moltres V. Fully powering it up, it uses its Aura Burn attack for 190 damage. This Pokemon also does 30 damage to itself, taking the KO on the opposing Comfey. It looks like another Comfey was put onto the bench on Lost Giratina's side, and then a Radiant Greninja. Um, concealed cards was activated by putting a energy card into the discard pile. Um, this was a Radiant Greninja, so this grass energy should not go into the lost zone. It should be in the hand. Our players eventually catch it here. Uh, and a Path to the Peak was put down, shutting off those Rulebox Pokemon abilities. A uh, flower selecting is being used by the active Comfey to take a look at the top two cards. Debating on sending a Mirage Gate into the Lost Zone. Here's where our players catch the uh, Radiant Greninja card going into the Lost Zone. They're discussing it, but as we've seen, that wasn't supposed to happen, so our players will go ahead and clean this up and get this resolved here. Now let's finish up the current flower selecting we're on with that Mirage Gate hitting the Lost Zone. Switch, basic switch into the other Comfey. Another flower selecting being used here. Let's see what our player decides to send to the Lost Zone. Another Mirage Gate followed by a Poke Gear 3.0 to take a look at the top seven cards of the deck. Grab a supporter card you find there. Boss's orders will be grabbed off of the top seven thanks to that Pokey Gear 3.0. Cramorant is put onto the bench now. The active Comfy gets a psychic energy attached to it. It manually retreats into that Cramorant. That Cramorant can now use its Spit Innocently attack for free thanks to its Lost Provisions ability and there being four or more cards in the Lost Zone. Boss's Orders brings up that Squawkabilly EX from the bench on the opponent's side. And Cramorant spits innocently onto it for 110 damage. Play resumes over on Lost Moon's Lost Moon, Roaring Moon side. There is actually a kind of a Lost Moon deck running around out there, right? Let's see how our Roaring Moon player responds. Path to the Peaks in play, so no Dire Flame Wings until now, but the Town Store countered that path to, path to the Peak. Looks like Town Store is being used now to search the deck for a tool card. That Forest Seal Stone being the target here and attached to the Glaring Moltres V, giving it the V Star Power Ability Star Alchemy to search the deck for any card. Energy Switch, Squawk Ability, Dark Patch, and Switch Cart in hand right now. So I think we're debating on using a, or excuse me, the V-Star power here 
to uh, beef up the hand because the, the options in hand are pretty low currently. No uh, very good supporter could be found at this point with that V star power. So we're debating on the best pick. And it's probably up that earthen vessel. A way to get energy to draw more cards off of that Radiant Greninja. Really leaning in hard on this Radiant Greninja during this game. Unnecessarily hard. We'll find out. There we go. Star Alchemy finds that earthen vessel. Earthen Vessel discards that useless Squawkabilly EX in order to search the deck for two basic energy. Two more dark energy pulled out of that deck, and I imagine a concealed cards from that Radiant Greninja is incoming. Good news is, is a switch card's already in hand. But I think uh, what our player is trying to do here is find a another backup attacker or a backup attacker to start powering up this turn. Of course the Roaring Moon could have been found directly or a backup attacker could have been found directly with the V-Star power but did they really want to use that V-Star power to find a Pokemon? Apparently not. So concealed cards, discard an energy, drawing two more cards and that Foreign Moon finally found and put into play. Now let's see if our player wants to start powering up that Roaring Moon. Energy attached to it. Dark Patch being used. Um, nope, not yet. <laughs> Actually, going to go for a Dire Flame Wings on the Glaring Motors V to accelerate an energy to it from the discard, then an energy switch to switch the energy to that Roaring Moon. Don't need to play that Dark Patch right away to keep the options open, I guess. And then finally, Switch Cart, healing 30 damage off of that Squawkabilly, switching it into the Glaring Motors V, and Glaring Motors does the Aura Burn again to take the KO, 30 more damage onto it. Not the best, but working with what they've got. Uh, meanwhile, Lost Giratina starts with a flower selecting, sending another card to the Lost Zone, adding one to the hand. Radiant Greninja discards an energy to draw two more cards. Jet energy attached to that other comfy on the bench, bringing it into the active, and it uses its flower selecting ability now to send the nest ball to the lost zone. Another card added to the hand. Ah, our Roaring Moon player needed to take a prize card after their turn as well. Um, Giratina V-Star evolved on the bench, giving it the Giratina V a lot more HP even if it doesn't attack this turn. Switch cart, switching into that Radiant Greninja and passing. Aha, our players caught now that a uh, prize card needed to be taken. Alright, that all works. Game state repaired, all clean, and play resumes over on Roaring Moon side. Boss's orders in hand. Boss's orders definitely going to bring up that Giratina V-Star. Not before a town store. Searching the deck for a tool card. Attaching that ancient booster energy capsule to the bench roaring moon, giving it plus 60 HP, and it can't be affected by special conditions. Uh, there was still the dark patch in hand, so the 
boss on the Giratina V-Star, Roaring Moon, Frenzied Gouging, for the KO play, is online, bossing up that Giratina V-Star. Yeah, I believe the uh, taking the KO on the Giratina V-Star with Roaring Moon's fren Frenzied Gouging this turn is the correct play. Radiant Greninja is going to discard an energy to draw two more cards, see what other options are there. So yeah, that's the debate. Do we swing into the Giratina V-Star with the active Glaring Moltres V, or retreat and take the KO with the Roaring Moon? Something to consider would be going below three prizes, making the Giratina Giratina's Roxanne supporter card online. Also, if there's no switch card in hand, two energy would have to go away from the board in order to retreat this Moltres. But one comes back, no matter what, with Dire Flame Wings. So, yeah, the more I look at this, the more I, I think the taking the KO with Roaring Moon's frenzy ga Frenzied Gouging is the play here, but... Our player is going to take a more conservative uh, approach and just swing into the active Giratina V Star with the Glaring Moltres V's Aura Burn, forcing the Giratina player to have all the answers to respond. We'll see if this works out in the end as play resumes over on Giratina V Star side. Looks like a Greninja Concealed Cards was activated to draw two more cards. Path to the Peak put into play, shutting off those Roblox Pokemon abilities. And a Course Experiment is the supporter for turn. For turn, you look at the top five cards of the deck, send two of them to the Lost Zone, and keep the other three. Chorus and Battle VIP Pass going to the Lost Zone there. And let's see what strategy will be executed here. Counter Catcher is active since the Giratina player has more prizes than the uh, Roaring Moon player. So Counter Catcher brings up that Roaring Moon from the bench into the active spot. Super Rod. Looks like it is uh, played in order to shuffle back into the deck from the discard pile. Three energy cards. Then a Mirage Gate is played to accelerate those energy cards from the deck to their Pokemon in any way you like. You can accelerate two different basic energy to your board however you like with Mirage Gate as long as you have seven or more cards in the Lost Zone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards in the Lost Zone currently. Maybe the hesitation here is um, our Giratina player assumed they had ten cards in the Lost Zone and it could take the KO with Giratina's Star Requiem, but you can't use Star Re Requiem unless you have ten or more cards in the Lost Zone. So that might be what's going on here as we see a psychic energy minute being attached to the bench Sableye grass energy going on to the active Giratina V-Star okay so could we be going in with Sableye this turn escape rope being played the opponent promotes a new active Pokemon first then the escape rope player. The escape rope player definitely knew they were going in with the the Comfe, so that's put up first. Our Roaring Moon player consulting the hand, trying to make the best guess of which Pokemon to promote. Um, meanwhile, our Lost Giratina player is going to proceed with a flower selecting. It looks like the Roaring Moon player is debating on putting more Pico up. 
far selecting CERN sends a Pokegear 3.0 to the lost zone. Comfey manually retreats into another Comfey, and it looks like our Roaring Moon player is settling on the Radiant Greninja to be pr promoted from the uh, escape rope. Thank you guys for bearing with us here. Lost Giratina side hits that second flower selecting, looking at the top two, sending grass energy to the lost zone and benching that secondary Giratina V onto the bench. And is there a pass? Yeah, it looks like passing things over. Back to our lost moon. Our <laughs> I'm never, never going to get that out of my head. Roaring moon player. Alright, so the Roaring Moon player had an Earthen Vessel in hand. They're playing it to search the deck for an energy card, most likely to retreat that Radiant Greninja with, but Big Punish comes down as there are no more energy cards in the deck. I believe there was one prized, but either way our player should have knew that there was none left in deck. And especially with the hand, should have sent up uh, more Pico with free retreat off of that escape rope there. So let's see how badly the punishment is. Our players consulting the discard and the hand for the next best move. Town store put into play. Town store going to be used to search that deck for a tool card. Looks like no tool card will be grabbed there off of the town store. They must really just not like Path to the Peak. I guess countering the Path to the Peak does uh, bring that Glaring Motra's ability online so it can accelerate an energy from the discard pile and nothing but a big fat past here. Path to the Peak comes back down over on Lost Giratina's side. Psychic energy attached to the bench Giratina V and Chorus Experiment being played. Sending a battle VIP pass and course experiment to the lost zone and keeping those other three cards. I'm pretty sure there's ten or more cards in the lost zone now so that Sableye Lost Mine is ready to go and pick on those highly damaged two prize Pokemon on the bench. Not before a Super Rod will be played to shuffle back into the deck from the discard pile two Water Energy and a Cramorant. The deck shouldn't have been looked at there, I don't think, but that's okay. We'll just move forward with a Mirage Gate to accelerate two different basic energy from the discard pile to the field. Another Psychic goes on to the Giratina V, and a Water goes on to the active Comfe. Alright, retreat into that Sableye, and it's Lost Mine time. As long as there are 10 or more cards in the Lost Zone, Sableye can use its Lost Mine attack to put 12 damage counters on the opponent's Pokemon in any way they like. That Squawkabilly EX is going to be KO'd there, and the rest of the damage will most likely go on to the heavily damaged Galarian Moltres. and play will resume on Roaring Moon side. Can they find a way to switch out of the active spot? Probably not. Lost Giratina's turn again. So that uh, Sableye now just has unlimited power. Giratina V-Star, second one evolving on the bench there. Debating on attack, attaching an energy, but now gonna hold off and lost mine with the active Sableye to clean up the KO on the Galarian Motrez and put the rest of the damage on the other two prizer that's in play, the Roaring Moon.
and play resumes over on Roaring Moon's side. Ro another Roaring Moon being put onto the bench and Professor Sada's Vitality being played. That supporter lets you accelerate a dark energy from your discard pile onto up to two of your ancient Pokemon in play. So one energy, energy goes onto one of the Roaring Moons from the discard. Another energy from the discard goes onto the other Roaring Moon and then Professor Sada says draw three more cards. All right, the switch card was found. Cart was found, but that would have been a lot nicer two turns ago. Or, of course, just promoting the more peco at free retreat off of the escape rope would have been uh, just fine. But here we go. Switch card into that free retreat more peco. Double dark patch, fully powering up that second roaring moon on the bench. Marpeko free retreats into one of these Roaring Moons. I don't think it matters too much which one goes up with this current board state. And essentially two free turns of uh, Lost Mine from Sable Eye. Just going to put up the Roaring Moon with the most HP. And... Uh, Calamity Storm taking the KO on the Sableye and removing the Path of the Peak from play. Comfe moves into the active spot here. Nest Ball gets played to bring Cramorant from the deck onto the bench. And we just need a Lost Requiem for game for the last two prizes here for Giratina. Flower Selecting sends Battle VIP Pass to the Lost Zone. And then uh, Radiant Greninja discards an energy to draw two more cards to get the last Psychic Energy from the deck attached to that heavily damaged Giratina V-Star. Switch into that Giratina V-Star and Star Requiem to take an instant KO on the opposing Pokemon and the last two prizes of the game. What do you guys think of this video in the commentary? Please let me know in the comments. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time in the Professor's Lab.